Uh, hi everyone. Um, so yeah, the kind of motivation of this talk comes from when I work on visualization projects. Many things caught me by surprise. Like some of this I have encountered over and over. And after having enough of these expensive lessons, I start taking notes so I can walk into the next challenge, can I more prepare. And I hope to share some of them in this talk. And before getting to that, let me tell you a little bit about myself. Um, so I was born and raised in Bangkok, Thailand. During my undergrad, there were two things I really liked, programming and robot. I did okay in the former, but not that much in the latter. So when my friend asked if I want to build robots to play football, I was so excited. I thought I was going to build something like Optimus Prime. Well, the robot turns out to be nothing like that at all. It was fun though, and gave me an important lesson. I totally hate hardware but I really love building user interfaces. I can spend all day figuring out the best place to place a button. So I went to the US to study how to build a good user interface and came across data visualization. The idea of making difficult things easier to understand visually fascinated me. Since then, I have been doing data visualization. I spent several years visualizing tweets and other things uh, at Twitter. And now I'm managing the data experience team at Airbnb to build data and visualization tools. My work can be grouped into three categories. The kind of fun visualization that target wide audience, um, like Twitter sometimes have this special thing that we send out uh, when there's a big event like the World Cup, Oscars, and other things. And I also spend a great deal of time uh, building visual analytics tools that target more advanced users, such as data scientists. And I also uh, uh, contribute to open source projects. Um, some of these are like reusable libraries or tools. And a lot of time, a simplified version of my work is somebody gave me a data and tell me to transform them into visualization. And as I told you, I was so excited about data. So I'm always eager to jump into a new data set and play with it. And this is my like, kind of feeling before jumping into it. And then this is what I got, which is not what I expected at all. So what are the things to expect when you try to visualize something? The first thing is it takes time to find a real need. This is easier being said than done. Oftentimes, we start on a very different understanding of the situation. Sometimes the clients think they have clean data, but they don't. Sometimes they don't know how hard or easy a task is. So giving estimation and setting the right expectation are important. They think that they got Harry Potter. Well, the reality is they are stuck with me. They thought that they need this 3D visualization with all bells and whistles. I look at that data set and, well, you need a bar chart. So communicate, like, figure out what are the goals? What are they trying to do? Are they trying to present something they already know? Are they trying to analyze something? Are they trying to build tools that can be used over and over? Or just do something for fun? And then ask the right questions. Who are the audience? What do you want to tell if you are trying to present something? If you want to analyze, what are the questions? If you are building a tool, who is gonna use this? What would they use it for? And even for doing something for fun, you need to know the audience. And if they strongly believe they need something and you think otherwise, there's gonna be conflict, right? So you have to be thinking out of the box a little bit and find some compromise. And sometimes, I even tried things their ways a little bit just to show why their ideas won't work. And hopefully that goes well. You figure out the needs, you get a good understanding uh, with whoever asks you to visualize the data and you get to the next step. And you should expect to clean the data a lot. The data scientists often joke about being data janitors because they spend 70, 80% of the time cleaning data which is usually not just clean, but include other tasks. And you might be wondering, why does it take so much time? 
Well, the first thing is because there are so many sources and format of data. Data set can come from the public repository, come from the organization, come from you manually collect the data, scraping from websites. And a lot of time you have to mix like some of these together. And they come in different formats. It could be standalone files with different extensions. Uh, it could be in database, which is complicated. Um, sometimes it looks organized, but it's not organized at all. Um, API, I, I had better luck with those, um, but sometimes it comes with overhead. You have to do some authentication to make sure you have access. And big data is another topic that I will cover later. So with all these varieties, you have to maybe change format, combine two, three files into one files, uh, and sometimes even figure out which data set to use. I used to work with one hospital that stores patient data in two places. <laughs> and then there was some mismatches between the two. So we need to figure out which one to believe. And the second thing is transforming data from how it was stored into something you can use. For example, like a common way to store user location is as latitude and longitude. But if you want to analyze users by country, you are going to have to convert those two numbers into a country code or something. And the third thing is data could be incorrect, mostly the wrong inputs. Um, the worst one is just missing data because you cannot do anything. It's just not there. And the fourth thing is definition of clean data is different. Let's do a quick exercise. Is this clean? All right, make your choice. The answer is it depends. If you are asking how many reviews are there, yes, yeah, it's clean enough. But if you ask how many restaurants are there, probably not. And when you combine all the different issues that could go wrong with the data, with big data, it just gets worse. When I was at Twitter and told others I worked there, they were like, oh, you are so lucky to have so much data. I was like, oh, trust me, I'm not, totally not at all. To get data from big data storage, you have to go through complex steps to get something small enough that you can grab without ever seeing the data set. It takes a long time. Like sometimes I run the job before I go to bed, only to wake up the next morning, and realize that I did something wrong. So I just run it again. Um, and this like waiting time can be hours. Like, if you try to get a whole year of tweets, good luck waiting. Um, and even simple tasks when you try to do with big data is not simple anymore. For example, if you want to get relevant tweets, uh, about the movie Parasite, right? Or maybe just get a tweet with the word Parasite in it. What could be so hard about it? Well, the issue is you can get something that is not about a movie, like this one. And you cannot tell because if you just count, you get one number back um, and you don't even know like what are included in those counts because you are forced to uh, make the data set that is small enough to fit in your local laptop um, to be able to see. Uh, you cannot download the whole data set. And maybe it's harder to spot problems. And because of that, like the worst thing is this issue have no mercy. They can show up anytime. Even when you are certain that you are clean, you are ready to ship things, there was once that I work on a color-coded map. I reused an old code that I used before with a new data set. So it should be simple, right? Just get the data in the right format, plug it in the old code to display a map color-coded by some metrics. Once I finish hooking up everything, this is what I got. Oop. What happened to the colors? Why am I seeing only one color in the middle? So I had to do some detective work. And the story was that this data set um, store user as latitude, longitude, yes. But each user has different granularity, like how precise the location we have. And 
at minimum, like we know the country from their ISP or something like that. Um, and if we don't have anything more precise, we are going to dump them into the middle of the country. So there are a bunch of users dumped into Kansas and it totally school ma map. And I had to like get rid of that bucket of users who landed in the middle of Kansas. So my recommendations when you clean data, always think that you have to do it again. Document the process at least, just note down what you did because it's very likely that you have to go through that again. And even better, you can write a script or some automation. So if you change step one, you don't have to go through step two, three, four, five, six, and seven manually by yourself. And we can also break large script into smaller one and try to use that next time. Or sometimes there are data set that you can use for future projects. And then once you have data, uh, it's time to try your idea. And it's probably when you discover more data problem, but let's ignore that for now. A lot of time, you never know if your beautiful ideas work or not until you try it. And most of the time, it fell miserably. Um, the first visual you get on the screen of your data set is usually not what you want, but it's okay. Instead of feeling disappointed, celebrate your trials. You're not the first, um, and it's very common. My tip is don't give up, uh, keep trying. If you get stuck, it's okay to take a little break, you know, look for inspiration, try different angles. And yeah, eventually like there'll be some breakthroughs. But another pitfall that some people fall into is like once you analyze data, trying to find patterns or something to tell a story about, and you stumble upon like an insight in particular views, then you try to repurpose that particular view for sharing with others, which may be or maybe not the best choice because by the time you have discovered that insight in that particular view, you have a lot of context. You have spent enough painful hours into this data set so you know every in and out of it. Um, but for people who are seeing this for the first time, that might be other ways, better ways to share the insight that you just gained from it. So don't overfix on that. And try to keep things simple. Um, don't like overcomplicate, add more things that are not necessary. And of course you can iterate forever, right? But then we need to kind of give it some push. You know, proverbs say necessity is a matter of invention. So we have to create some necessity or sometimes necessity come to you because those are deadlines. Deadline is such a great motivation to complete the work within a given time frame. If it is a personal project that nobody gives you deadline, you should also give yourself a deadline. And not just deadline for completing the whole project, but deadline for each milestone. Um, so it will keep pushing you forward. Um, and to share some ideas of what iterations I mean? Let me share one of my past projects about Game of Thrones. So this was at the time when I was still at Twitter. Um, the problem we were interested at the moment is try to understand what the audience were talking about um, the TV show from tweets. And we fixed, uh, we chose Game of Thrones because, well, it's very famous. Like if you don't know it, by any chance, uh, it's based on the book series, A Song of Ice and Fire. It's medieval fantasy with knights, nice magic, dragon, and a lot of other weird things. There are so many characters and anybody can die. So it's even more interesting. Eight seasons of stories with tons of characters. Each episode has many storylines going on at the same time. So it's very rich. So we brainstorm and of course somebody was gonna say, um, well, let's do a word cloud, uh, see the common words. And this always is too much noise. Like um, you cannot see any pattern. So, okay, let's take a step back. When we watch a show, what do we care about? We care about the characters. Maybe what if we count how many times each character were mentioned? Then let's do some prototyping. We pull some sample data from Twitter 
API instead of going to the entire data set um, just to speed up the iteration. And to cover character is this just naive approach, like there's no machine learning or anything, just a spreadsheet of names um, and then do some pattern matching with the tweets. For example, you look at this tweet, there's a the word Hodor and it, it matches the character names and I count that as a one. And we got a data set like this based on that process. We have name of the character, how many times they appear um, in the tweets of a certain episode. Okay, so where do we go from here? We could take that, maybe draw a bar shot, but is that the most interesting thing we could do with the data? Let's take a look at the tweets again. What else are in there? A lot of time people express emotions in the tweets. Um, and sometimes people mention more than one characters together and it, we can infer connections from them. So this led us to focus on emotions and connection within episodes. So not only we count the number of times certain character appears, but we also count when multiple characters appear together and also collect the top emojis for each of the characters and relationships. And if you uh, have came across computer science, like literature a little bit, this data set kind of look like a graph, um, which like has the characters uh, as the nodes and the relationship are the links. And a common way to visualize a graph data set is to draw maybe circles um, or shapes uh, to represent the node. Uh, the character in this case. And then we, we can draw lines um, between the circles to show relationships. And we can add some physics simulation. So if there are connection between the characters, it, they will pull each other together and hopefully we can find something interesting. However, a common issue with this uh, force directed approach is you're gonna get a hairball in the beginning. Um, you know, everything related, uh, some characters like uh, may mention another one at once and we pull everything together. We cannot see any patterns. We cannot even read some names. So how to fix V6 is? At first I try a lazy approach. I try to just manually drag them apart and it was pretty much this attempt. Um, so I try to do more physics. Um, what if the circles know about each other? You know that, hey, I'm here. You cannot overlap with me. Just push each other out. And it kind of starts showing some promise. At least now you can read all the uh, character names and you can see the top emojis associated with certain characters. And the size of the circle represent how often that character was mentioned in that episode. For example, this one, Hoda was mentioned a lot. And we push this further by adding uh, algorithm called community detection, which will draw a boundary for the characters that are tightly connected. And then we push this cluster apart a little bit more. So now you can see the patterns a little bit better, like each of these regions clusters uh, correspond to a certain storyline within that episode very well. And that I think we have uh, at that point, we think it was good enough, so we can move on to get other episodes. And that's when I go to Hadoop to get the entire data set. I have to rewrite the whole script. Um, and now the show show uh, like every Sunday thing at that time. So there were questions about how much data do we need? Do we need a whole week? Five days, two days, one day? All right, pick your choice. Thumbs up. Um, well, you could do a while guess, but we could use data to help you make decisions as well. Uh, we can plot the distribution of the like, number of tweets over time and use that to decide. And at that time, I think it was like about two days or something like that. We already covered 90% of the tweets, so we don't have to run the whole week of data. So now coming back, like we have the visualization, right? But that alone is not enough. If you can gonna drop this into the page and hope everybody understand everything, that's not gonna work. So we're gonna help to help the audience uh, like explain what are the colors at the legend. And we have multiple episodes. You need a way to move between episodes. 
And for people who cannot read the graph anyway, there should be an easy way for people to still consume this and see something. And there are some advanced um, options for people who know what they are doing. And if you didn't watch the show or you forget, like, what was it about? What is this, this episode? We kind of copy that from Wikipedia, uh, have a synopsis of the episode there, highlight the characters. You also add introduction. If you mouse over certain characters, it only uh, filter the storyline that uh, about that characters. And to show you a quick demo of like this project, um, sorry. So this is live on interactive.twitter.com. You can go check it out. You, know, you can like duck it around for fun. Um, you can mouse over to see more information. What is the most common emoji for these characters? Insert that episode. You can see the bow lines, like show a lot of strong connection. I mean that people mention these two characters together a lot. You can also look at the most mentioned characters and most mentioned together. And this not only work on uh, desktop, but we also have the kind of mobile version like support. So yeah, it was, um, that was a lot of iteration until we get to this point. Um, and not only like that iteration is like, um, is the key thing, make sure to reserve time for refinement. Like a lot of times you think that, oh, you are done, almost close to done, you finished 90% of the project. But then the fact is the last 10% is the hardest um, and maybe take the same amount of time. Like, and these little things that people do behind the scenes are what separate good and great work. Like changing colors, if you use the default D3 schemes versus changing it to color that may be more meaningful for your data set, um, tuning some user interaction to make it more smooth, supporting mobile that the display is so small that your current visualization that work for desktop won't work for it. Um, and this include even uh, things beyond like uh, uh, metadata uh, or try to add social media preview image so it will look uh, better when you share things. Or the invisible thing like optimizing the data set size so it loads faster. Um, for some examples, uh, I also did a uh, few maps um, based on Twitter data to show the fandom, um, like we have the NFL map to show oh, where the fans of each team live, um, fan of the NBA teams live, and the fan of English Premier League. Um, so this one is a little bit different than the other ones that we didn't use the uh, geo boundary of the province or sub-region in each country, but we do a kind of cheap way of using the hexagon binning approach. Like we cut the world into like this little kind of beehive uh, shape um, and drop people into certain buckets. So it kind of give us like some rough idea if within the same country, like are there preference um, like for one team or the other um, in different regions, which kind of like is a cheap way that we can cover the whole web without trying to get like, oh, what are the province, states, uh, regions for each country. However, um, this doesn't work for the part where the team actually are from. Like, so we did a special thing that if you zoom into the UK, right? You get the actual like uh, ge geo boundary um, because that is more meaningful. Like, why if you look at the other countries, we, we didn't like have more granularities beyond country. Um, so that was like the little details that maybe people don't notice, but like we try to. Um, cache the edge case and tune them. And even in the Game of Thrones one, uh, when we add more episodes, there was an issue about transition. 
So this is what happens when you change from one episode to another. If it is the default behavior, boom. Yeah, maybe the user will not notice, but like at that time, it was like, oh, this is so ugly. Um, so I did a few more extra steps to try to ensure that like, we have a smooth transition. Like, look at this compared to the one that you just saw. Um, so I think, yeah, these are the little details that, you know, separate between good and great work and make sure you reserve time for them. And once you are close to launch, um, don't forget like to plan for feedback. Like during the development, you should always like try to find a pre-launch feedback either by within your team at least, or if you can find potential users or people who will see this, um, that will be great. Other release, um, at minimum, I will have Google Analytics so I know how many people what, look at it, or maybe even log the events that people, hey, click on this buttons, like click on these characters. Or if like you are more into the like research or you have more time, you can run user study, sit down with users, see how they use the tools. Um, or sometimes in the corporate setting, we do office hours that we uh, launch it to and say, hey, if you have issues um, or feedback, anything, you can stop by our office hours. And by tracing like some of this feedback, like sometimes it gives you a kind of surprise feedback. Like I was tracing referral in Google Analytics for the Game of Thrones one, and this is what I got. Like, oh, somebody has been stuck in my Game of Thrones list for 30 minutes. Great. Um, and it has been confirmed by Gizmodo and the next web that is very high uh, addictive. So thank you. Um, so the last thing is like, don't forget to reflect and learn from the experience after you finish a project. It's very easy to forget everything and just like call it a day when it's done, but then you lose the opportunity to be better. Like you ask yourself, hey, what could have been better in this project? Like if you, the answer is, uh, if I know how to do this, must have been easier, then maybe you should learn how to do that thing. If you say, oh, there's so much work, like I wish I had someone who can do this thing to help me, maybe look for help or if uh, yeah, you can grow the team or find somebody else to help you. If you are wondering, oh, why do I have to do the same task again? I have done this in three projects in a row. It's the same task then maybe you could benefit from having a reusable components or try to automate this repetitive task so you can save time um, for doing something else. And uh, this is one of the project that I build a reusable component uh, based on my repetitive pain point of doing the same task over and over. I had to visualize a lot of timelines um, back in the days. And the issue with visualizing things on the timeline is when you try to place a label for the point, for example, this point, the, the orange thing is like a label for it. Right? The label often overlaps if you just drop it right below the point. And a lot of time it's just like, okay, let's add manual shifting, drag it around or programmatically move it by three pixels just so that you can read the labels. But it's not scalable, and if the data change, you have to do that thing all over again. So I wrote this library that, all right, given the point, just tell me where to post the label so they will not overlap ever, like no matter where the points are. And that saved me a lot of time. Um, it's open source, many people have used it, um, and I think like 538 also use it. Um, recently, my team at Airbnb uh, did an announcement for the VSX library, which is a reusable building block for React and D3. So if you love D3, use React, please check it out. All right, so in summary, um, you know, I try to share the notes I tell myself, reminding every time before I jump into a new data set, like, hey, expect to see these things um, in your project, like don't uh, like jump in, like you are preparing, like just make your mindset right. Um, so I hope these are helpful um, and like 
if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me uh, by my Twitter handle. Um, I would like to thank uh, a lot of people who helped me um, throughout this project. It's not my accomplishment alone. And with that, I would like to end my talk here. Thank you.